Hello, this is Christian. This is video five of the Laravel project tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at how to create routes in Laravel. And these are the five major topics we'll cover in this video. We'll take a look at the basic routing, mainly the CRUD operations. You will not be creating or performing any operations in here. I'm just going to show you how to use them, how to create them basically. And we'll look at the view routes, how to use the view function to generate a route, uh, basically for a GET um, uh, request. And I will show you how to also redirect a route to a different URL. And, and most importantly, when you do a lot of forms or um, pass parameters to a route or URL, how do you do that? And how do you retrieve those data? And finally, we'll look at how to create route prefixes and how to use them in your program. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now in the IDE here, I do want to make a, a change. I did notice that in my previous video in the um, in the views, especially the contact view, I did not include the title. I accidentally deleted that. So I put that back there and make sure you fix that. I also added a class called contact to make it so that the buttons are in center. Um, okay. In addition to that, I added some images inside the CSS, I mean, the public folder here, these are provided for you as well. If you want to access these layouts, uh, they are available in the uh, repository. If I go over here now, it under this Git repository, all the layouts and the views are in here for your um, use. Okay, so let's go and run our application first. So back in here, go to the terminal. <clears throat> Make sure you go to the Hello Project, and then I'm going to a PHP artisan server. Now I'm gonna um, go over something a little bit here, just in case if you run into some issues like with port conflict, things like that. Notice that the default port number is indeed 8,000. If you wanna change that port, you can. Um, and I'll show you how to do that just in case. But anyway, so here is the program it's running right now. And I did change the contact form to have the word contact me here and also center my buttons right here, All right? So that's what the, um, that's the, uh, the difference here. Now, so back to here. So in the port number, I'm using port 8000. If you wanna change it, okay? The quick way to do that is if I can sort out, um, run my command here, you can add a flag here, to say, uh, dash dash port and set the equal to a port number of your choice. Okay, so when you run this application, it only runs that instance. Okay, if you run it again, you have to create a new port or something, but that's another way. So let's say I wanna change it to 9,000 instead. So when I do that, as you can see, it overrides the default 8,000 and it's now 9,000. I go back, try to refresh with it. Port 8000 is not going to work anymore until I change it to the 9000. Okay. So that is one way to do that. Another way you can do is um, it's more of a, I guess, semi permanent. Let me close this again. Is um, go and, if, and, and uh, change the actual uh, port number. I mean, I don't recommend it unless you really want to do that, but. Um, but you probably don't want to do that. Um, you can. If you go to the uh, vendor, again, vendor and the framework, okay, the Laravel framework um, in here under the SRC and the foundations and um, under the, uh, I think, console. And there is a file called. Um, a server command or serve command, right? This serve command, this file, if you, you if you scroll down, you see that in line number 184 here, it has the port number set to 8,000. And this is what the port number is, okay? And it's like really complicated, it's hidden really deep inside of here, the framework. But this is what you would change to a different number if you wanna do that. Notice it reads the port number from the command terminal. When you do a serve, Right, I pass the port 9000 because it looks at the port number. If I don't include it, then it's gonna use the 8000. Otherwise, we use the port number, okay? So let's say I put here 10,000, okay? So that's the default port and go back to the terminal and run without the port uh, flag. You should see that it would use 10,000 as opposed to 
8,000, okay? So that's what you would change in here. Again, don't do it if you, unless you really have to. So I'm gonna revert it back to its our default, which is 8,000 and close that. And then we run my command again down here. Okay, so we are now good to go. And I can close this, but I'm gonna go ahead and create another one here just in case if I use it later. All right, so I'll close this both. Terminal, make sure my site is running back to port 8,000 and we are now good to go. Okay, so the first thing is we want to create routes. Now, um, let me collapse everything and reopen the whole thing here again. Your routes exist inside the routes folder under the web PHP file. Okay, so these are the routes that we created earlier in the previous video. Now, these are all the get um, routes only, meaning that you only retrieve a get request, right? So if you, if you um, know the crowd operations, that's what these are for. And so this is pretty straightforward. Now the route uses a get function for the get request. There is a, um, a post and a, a get, post, delete, uh, put, okay? Those, all those crowd operations in here. So if you wanna use it, just, you just change it to the, like the, um, the post would be used for, if you're using a form, and you post data to your database, then you will use the post function, okay? Um, the other would be delete. If you want to delete the data, then you need to send the, a delete function and, you know, calling through like an API or some sort, and you match the data here based on the, the request type. And the others are like uh, put for updating event, um, your data. So, you know, just for that and, uh, and so forth, like the patch and the options um, as well. Okay, so we'll do those later when we do the crowd operations, but basically that's how you do it. So route that get, route that uh, colon, colon, put, and so forth. Now, I'm gonna put back to get. So uh, for this video, we'll just focus on the get. That's easier um, for us to understand. So you notice that it takes um, at least two parameters. The first is indeed the name of the URL or the pattern in string format. Uh, the slash is always the root directory. This is um, a about uh, page, if you will, or a slash about directory, contact portfolio, and so forth. Okay, so the second parameter is a callback function or a closure that usually or usually it should return something to the view. Okay, so the return function here, I um, mean, return here returns a view to the browser. And the view function here takes um, at least two parameters. Um, the first one here is actually there are more parameters, but the, the one that is usually more relevant is the index or the view here, the name of the view. This is the name of your blade view. I would just say blade because we want to use blade syntax. So that's the view is instead of resources, views, and these are your templates. Okay. Again, the name of the we only do not include the extension at that blade, that PHP or anything like that. If you do pass data to this view, then the second parameter is where you do that. Okay, usually you use it in an array like this, a key value pair or associative array. Um, if you pass more than one data, right? If you just do one piece of data, then you can also do something like this instead of saying, um, uh, you know, that you can use the with function and uh, you can pass that too. But I, I would stick with this array, okay? What, what I meant was like, you could do this. So I can do about and then here arrow and then we'll put here, let's see if this works with. And then the with functions, you can see it takes the parameter here followed by um, the value. And we'll see if this works. Um, okay, so it's only for like, you know, one parameter or some, some sort. I mean, this way or that way, it doesn't matter. And if I save that, let me just uh, do something here about maybe with exclamation mark, just to make sure that it does work, okay? So go back to the browser and go to the about me and you see that it does work, all right? So you can use the with function um, or again, my recommendation is just to use the, uh, the, um, the array here okay all right um so 
Now, one thing you want to do also is if you want to see all your routes, whether they are you know, created in this web file, because later on when you create a lot of routes, you tend to break them out, put into separate files and all over the place, right? And so how do you track all these routes? Now in the command terminal, if you go back in here using the other um, PowerShell command here, you can actually see a list of all your routes by typing the word PHP artisan and uh, route colon list. Okay, this will tell you here all the routes that this application is using. So you can see that there are some routes that are um, generated by the uh, framework or some third party. Like it tells you what type of route it is. As you can see, both of these, this is a get, this is a post, get, post, and you can see these are the ones that I create, right? Um, except, you know, the last one here. So if you want to see um, what type it is. So for example, let's just say that I'm going to change the about to a, uh, a post and I'll change the contact to delete. Just so you can see, I'm not going to do it in, in the operations here. Save the file, go back in here and run the command again. And now you see that the about has been changed to a post, right? And then the delete, um, the contact has been changed to a delete. Okay, if you do want to see just the one that you create, just your own, then you can also do that by following the same command, except over here, you want to list a flag to say dash dash accept and then dash vendor. That will remove all the other routes that not created by you. Okay, so now you can see these are all the routes that you create, your own custom routes. And there should be about, you know, five of them, including you know, this gap is, so they have um, five. Um, yeah. All right, so that's kind of useful. Um, I wanna go back and change back to, uh, all right, so now let's see how, another way you can generate uh, um, routes and reviews. So notice that when we, this is the typical way how to generate a, a, a route, a view, okay? Using the return function, and the callback function, return that to the thing, to the view. You do this way because it's a function, and maybe inside the function, you wanna perform some operations, right? So this is not a big of deal. Maybe like in your portfolio, we do a, um, a get a certain uh, user ID or something to search, your database returns some data back. So you do some operations in here, okay? And then and then you would then include that in your view and so forth. If you don't do any operations, any special operations in here at all, then you can actually just render this view to the browser using a different method, uh, using what's called the view function here, okay? So let me go back and um, maybe we'll change this about here. Or for now, okay? So let's rewrite that one using a different method here. So this is called the um, view routes. So colon colon view function as opposed to the get. Okay, so the view here is usually always the get. It's a default to the get. That means you're gonna render some view to the browser only. So it's gonna take the URL of about. And then over here, you just have to basically um, give the name of the view, which is in this case will be about. Okay. If you pass any data, then that's the third parameter over here. Let me put a semicolon just to terminate that thing. And then the data will be the title here, right? So again, I'm gonna put, let me copy this, uh, put it in here. And the title is about me. Let me move that exclamation mark again. And then let me turn this off. Okay, so you can see that it's shorter. Okay, I don't have to use the function. I don't use the return statement and things like that. It's just the URL, the name of your view, and any parameter you need to pass to that view. This, again, this is optional, all right? So now if I save this and go back to the browser and go to the about page, you can see it still works just fine. All right, so that's a shortcut. Um, if you want to uh, just render a view okay, without doing any other operations. If you want to do operations, then you want to use the callback function. Okay, 
So that's um, it for that one. The next one is, let's do a redirect. Let's say that, you know, when I navigate to the contact page, um, or, or I don't know, the, um, the maybe homepage here, okay? Let's go to the homepage, and then I would then redirect to the about page, okay? So in here, you can call the redirect function as opposed to the view. So instead of saying return view, I would do a return and then redirect. So again, here very simple. As you can see, it takes a string. The string is the view, which is the URL we're gonna to pass to. In this case, it's gonna be the about page. Okay. And basically that's that's the minimum you can you you will need. Now, because I have two two return statements, this is not gonna run. Okay. I, I will leave it here but I'm just not gonna run. Uh, it's the first one, it will, it will redirect. So that means when I go to the homepage, it's going to redirect this to the about page. So this is useful for um, you know, redirecting to a different page. Let's say you have a, a, a new uh, web page, a new um, content page of some sort, and the URL has been changed. And if people are still accessing your old URL, right? Because they still, they you know, save that or favorite the URL then you can redirect it to the new page and that's how you do it, okay? So let's save that and uh, go back to the browser. And if I go to the home page, you will see that it should take me right back to the about page. So now I lost access to the home page, basically, okay? So you can see, and it takes me right to the about page. So that's for redirecting. And you can do more than that, just redirecting. I'm just giving you a really simple one where you just put the URL into the redirect. You can also using um, you can use a, a named route, and we will do that later. But um, that's that's enough for this one. Now the next one I'm gonna look at is let me turn this off. I don't want to go back to that route. Is parameters okay? So let's say that I'm going to um, maybe the portfolio here. I like to uh yeah just just for testing purposes okay so let's say i want to include a um an id or some sort okay so maybe the id of my project right because if you look at the the, the um and, and we'll do later when we do the model you can actually search for a particular project so the way that parameter works is that right at the slash here you can put uh, in a, a, a variable wrap inside a pair of curly braces like this, and then the name of the variable, whatever you want to call it, okay? it's a valid um, variable name, like basically ID. Okay, so notice I do not put a dollar sign like this. Okay, so just the regular ID here. And then how you access this is you must pass this ID to the function here. Okay, so you pass it as a ID. The name has to match with the dollar sign in this case now. And the way I have here, because you know ID is required, okay? As is this URL is required. So they're both required. That means if I if I don't include the ID or if I include uh, data here, it's gonna fail, okay? Um, and let's say I'm gonna pass this ID to the project uh, as well. So you put here the ID that maps to the um, ID field. Okay, whatever I pass to is going to pass here. And then I'm going to update my portfolio blade pay template right here. And let's just put here a regular paragraph followed by the ID. So it's very simple. Save that. Now go back to the browser and refresh my portfolio. And you will see that now it fails because I did not include the ID. So again, the URL doesn't match anymore, so it fails. So in this case, I must include a, an ID. Okay, as you can see that ID three has been, um, oops, let's see, ID, oh, I mistyped D in my code. So let's see, I call it uh, ID, where did I put that the oh, ID in here? Okay, so you can see that now it's required to include the ID. 
it's, it's printed here. Now, AD could be anything. It could be anything like that, ABC123. Anything you put here will be uh, accepted. All right. Now, what if you don't want to include ID, but you still want to get there, right? So by doing that, you can do something what's called an optional parameter. And you can easily do that by prepending the ID here with the question mark, okay? The question mark here has been used sometimes as a safe operator, um, meaning that if it's not included, then it's optional. Now, the only caveat is that if you include an optional parameter, your ID must also be set to a default value. If you don't set default value, the ID here will, it will accept, but it's gonna fail in here if, if I'm not mistaken. So let's say I say this and go back to the browser and I just refresh the page here, okay? So you can see that it's not found because, you know, I did not um, have a default value of some sort, okay? So let's go back and fix that by Included in here, ID is set to a default value. You can pull it null if you want, or set to a default value of one, two, three, what doesn't matter, okay? So now, um, since null is not, I, I'm gonna pass it. So let's just put here, I put zero, 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 okay? Or just zero, it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe 1000 as my default. So then if I go back and refresh the page, so, um, uh, okay, something's not right. I think I put it in the wrong place. Yeah, it's probably the wrong place. It's after. Sorry about that. So after, and uh, so here we go. So it's a thousand here, right? And that's the optional is yes, optional parameter. So I don't have to include it. If I do include it, it's going to override my thousand, and then and so forth. You can, you can do a lot more. I'm not gonna go into detail, but you can restrict so that your URL, uh, this ID only accepts numbers, right? Or uh, only characters or punctuation marks or the number of number you can have, right? Using regular expression. Again, refer to the, to the um, documentation and look at reg, um, regex and they will help you to do all those stuff, okay? Um, okay, so that is pretty much it for this one here. You can have multiple parameters. I just put one here. I could do another one, let's say ID and then slash, um, maybe, you know, I don't know, um, object P and then here, let's just say that it's gonna take another ID here called um, year, okay, like that. Right, so I have two parameters. So therefore then I have to include two parameters here as well. Again, I'll put default to 2022. That's a default year. And I'll pass that as well. So we can see that it's actually working. And we'll put here. Okay, so I follow this pattern. Okay, so the portfolio slash ID slash P and then slash year. P, I guess, project, I don't know. Um, and then in my program here, I'm gonna put another one here, um, duplicate this, and this would be the year. Perfect. Okay, so let's go to the browser. And again, make sure I match the pattern. If I don't do that, it's gonna fail, right? So it's that, no, that one, followed by the P, followed by the year 2023, and, and boom, there it is. Okay, so you can have multiple parameters. Um, you can do a lot more. I could I can generate make this as a random uh, uh, variable. I can only accept only like certain categories like P, uh, Q, T, whatever, right? You can do that as well. Um, very flexible and Laravel, and also quite powerful as well. Um, okay, so that's that. Now the last one I'll look at is the prefix. Now, what does it mean prefix? Okay, so, you know, for example, let's say that, for example, let's say all your routes here, um, maybe, you know, maybe the contact and the, con the homepage is okay, but let's say these three routes here belong to um, like, like uh, admins or users, right? So I can prefix this with another um, URL called 
maybe, um, I don't know, we'll call it users. Okay. And then we'll put that here as well. Users here, users contact, user portfolio. So now my URL has been changed. Okay. And because they have been changed, my um, navigation no longer works. But I just want to show you anyway. So we'll go over here. Home page works fine. If I go to the about page, you will see I did not match the URL. It has to go to the user and then about, right? And then user contact. Okay, so you can see that I grouped this into a users uh, uh, group. So this is how you can generate unique URLs for any group you want, right? I did not create any directories and the code um, at all. I just basically name it what I want. So instead of doing this way, like in your code, I can group this together and under this users group, okay? So you don't have to do this like the whole time. And you can change it just one place and it can actually, you know, um, change everywhere else, which is pretty cool, okay? So how to do that is you can write a function, group these three together. So right out here, you're gonna nest these groups inside another route called prefix. You give it a name. In this case, it's called users, okay? And this users then is gonna point to a group function. And this group function here takes a callback function like that. And then inside this callback function is where all these routes will live. So you move all these into the group function here, tab it over, it looks nice. So you can see that now they are grouped inside this group. So I don't need to use the users here anymore. I'm gonna go back to just the about contact and portfolio. And because I'm using the prefix function, Laravel will prefix all these routes using the users here, just like I had before, okay? So that's so this way I can change it in time of one. I wanna change it to students or products or whatever it is, I'm just doing one place and everywhere else is changed automatically. So very powerful, very cool feature. So save that and you know, um, let's go back to the browser and run it again. And it should still work as you can see. Um, oh, prefixes. Um, okay, something's wrong with my code. I define prefix. Uh, let's try again. Probably uh, did the incorrect. Um, prefix group function. Um, looks good to me. I wonder why it's not letting me do it. Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, looks okay to me though. Let's see. Oh, maybe I typed. Oh yeah, right here. I'm missing the double colons. Er, okay. <laughs> so that should, that should resolve it. Let's go back and uh, try again. Um, and then you will see that now it uses the user's um, prefix as opposed to just the about. If I click it again, just the about is not gonna work, okay? So that's another way to quickly create any prefixes. Now I promise this is the last one I forgot to mention is that I want to create a fallback route. A fallback route is a route where like, if you go here, you have it not found, right? It's just gonna ugly, you know, give this message to the user. So instead of doing this way, you can create a route that will capture or catch all the other routes not in here, right? So I'm gonna go back and turn off this um, uh, route feature here. Now your fallback route must be at the very bottom of the page down here, okay? If, if you put on the top, it's gonna capture everything and all the other routes will not get it. So you will use a route called fallback, just the name fallback, which is kind of nice. And you don't put any parameters in here other than just a callback function. And this function here um, basically um, you return a view. Okay, so return a view. What's the view called? I'll call it 404 because it is a 404. And I'll create a, a blade for that. And we'll put here the title as well. Um, and we'll Call it um, not found. Kind of the same thing, but then we'll, we'll create a view to make it a little bit nicer. 
So I'm going to copy one of these, maybe the about one. Yeah, copy that one, control paste and replace it with a um, 404 dot blade. Now in the content here, I'm going to include a, um, uh, the title will be the same. This is the same here. The message will be something like, um, you know, sorry, I fail to find what you are looking for. Uh, please try again. Yeah, I already included an image I'm going to use in here in the public folder, um, the cry emoji. <laughs> so if you want to, you know, add that in here, maybe right above here, I use a figure. Um, I keep forgetting. So the image here, and it's coming from the images, um, crying emoji. <clears throat> Okay, so, and that would put a kind of, I guess, a nice emoji on the side. So let's save this and go back to the browser and see what we have. So again, refresh, and there it is. Um, well, they don't want this, okay. Um, if we go to like in you know, ABC, right? So you can see uh, my emoji is not coming through. I probably mistyped this somewhere. Um, but you can see that that's the message is coming in and images. Um, yeah, it's, it's right. I'm not sure why it's not loading up, but uh, crying emoji. Um, hmm, what's going on? All right, so it doesn't really like me today. Okay. Um, PNG, okay, PNG. <laughs> Wait, let's see, let's try again, and there we go. Okay, so I did not center, you can make a nicer look, look, make a center and so forth. So that's what the fallback is for. It, just make sure you put it at the very bottom of your page, otherwise it's gonna capture that and it's not gonna work for you. Okay, well, thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll look at uh, the controller or the model. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.